progress through education and industry has a new meaning today. To progress, we must win this war. To win this war, we must have machines and the brains to direct these instruments of warfare. We need the trained minds of millions of specialists. Our American colleges and universities are responding to the call for trained manpower. Education is speeded up. Courses are being geared for war. Like many other American colleges, Tuskegee Institute in Alabama has been graduating qualified flyers for some time. The United States Army Air Forces stationed at Tuskegee's fields hold classes on the campus to teach the fundamentals of ground school. Tuskegee shops prepare students for jobs in aviation plants. The work of Dr. Carver is well known. While at Tuskegee, he has contributed much to the science of nutrition and is now using his talents and his knowledge in the war effort. Other Tuskegee scientists are also working to improve diets at home. With the need of greater quantities of alcohol for war uses, scientists are working on methods to get alcohol out of agricultural products. Using an improved process, these scientists get more alcohol from the plentiful sweet potato than ever before. Many courses, like this automotive maintenance class, are given to women who learn to fill jobs vacated by men gone to war. Prairie View, one of the state colleges of Texas, is designing courses to supply trained men and women to the increasingly technical fields of industrial and military service. In the agriculture department, students study the operation and maintenance of farm equipment. Methods of increasing important farm products and the study of animal husbandry are part of this program. A forging class learns how to make machine parts and tools, so difficult to get in wartime. Many will get jobs in war plants. Well-equipped machine shops in the mechanical department teach these young men how to make the materials so vital in our war effort today. The demand for trained specialists is increasing. Jobs are opening in all parts of the country and these college departments help to meet the shortage of manpower. Colleges everywhere are adding new courses for war training and are putting new emphasis on old ones. For example, here at Howard University, located in Washington, D.C., this class in mechanical designing trains men and women for jobs in the plants that make our tanks, guns, and machines. This meteorology class teaches future flyers celestial navigation, the science that guides our planes to their objectives and safely home again. Many laboratories are now specializing on war materials, and classes like this teach students the chemistry of powder and explosives to train them for positions in munition plants. Testing machines try the explosive force of new powders. Howard University Medical School has speeded up training to furnish doctors and nurses for the fighting forces. One of the country's leading authorities on blood plasma shows students how to determine the gravity of plasma to be used in the war zone. In the College of Liberal Arts, this class studies the economics of war. Many graduates fill jobs in the accounting departments of war plants and government agencies. Hampton Institute, located on the banks of Hampton Roads, Virginia, is practically on a 24-hour basis, training hundreds of war workers. The president's home was an old plantation house. Here, one of the country's great educators welcomes foreign students who are sent to learn American customs and culture. Students studying building construction and architecture built most of the buildings on Hampton campus. One of the special war courses is in radio operation and construction. Here, students learn to operate communication centers and thus prepare for specialized duties with the armed forces. Hampton's war program is more than that of trades. Here, a class in chemistry assists an instructor who is doing much research in the development of new war material. Science students are preparing themselves as laboratory technicians and work on special studies for the United States Public Health Service. This student is testing for bacteria in food caused by handling. 
Because of the urgent demand for trained nurses, Hampton is cooperating with nearby hospitals by providing classroom and laboratory training. Several graduates of ground school classes like this are now flying with the United States Army Air Force Pursuit Squadron at Tuskegee. Others are serving as instructors in other college airfields. While turning out war materials on contract, these students are training to take their places with the nation's skilled mechanics. Step-up courses are offered to men already in war industries, as well as to students, to meet the demand for skilled workers at the nearby shipyards, where more ships than ever before are sent down the way. Hampton's Agriculture Department has added a course in farm management for women. These girls are planting corn on the college farm as they learn to operate farm equipment. At the student-built dairy farm, girls watch an expert milk a cow. One of the most significant fields of the war program is the study and work in nutrition. Much research has been done with the use of soybeans as a substitute for meat and milk, so important at present when we are conserving these foods for war purposes. Since the war began, many radio programs have been sent over Hampton Station giving the results of research, ways to improve diets, to raise better crops, and how to do our part to win the war are broadcast to thousands of families within reach of this station. Students take a course in surveying and topography to aid them in army training. The Institute Regiment has been in existence since 1868, when Hampton was founded. Cadet uniforms are made by students in the college tailoring classes. Many of Hampton's facilities are now being used by the armed forces. Selected men throughout the country are sent for training as army motor mechanics. After the three months course, these men are usually sent back to their posts in charge of repair crews. Army trucks from nearby camps are soon put in order. The first class in specialized training is now given in Hampton's engineering department for hundreds of men in the United States Navy. Thousands of men and women of these colleges over the nation are now taking their places in our war effort. Physically and mentally fit, 